Thank you for the introduction. As said before, uh, my name is Gerald Trummer. I work at the Virtual Vehicle Research Center in Graz, Austria. And I'd like to talk about reproducing rolling contact fatigue relevant loading conditions of railway operation on a test rig today. The core authors of this work from the Virtual Vehicle Research Center are Florian Kubelwieser and Christoph Marte and Klaus Six. And this work has been done together with um, Stefan Scheriau, who works for our industrial partner, First Alpine Schienen GmbH, and together with Professor Peter Dietmeier, uh, who is professor at uh, the Graz University of Technology. I'd like to give a short introduction, uh, then talk about the methodology we used um, regarding uh, to the multiple dynamic simulations, the, um, talk about the rolling contact fatigue assessment, show results, and then sum up and conclude. The objective of this work is to develop a methodology to analyze and transfer loading conditions that occur in railway operation on specific track sections uh, and that are relevant for rolling contact fatigue in this uh, crack initiation into an experimental test setting. Why do we do, or why do we want to do that? Well, um, that's important to support the development of rail materials uh, with respect to um, uh, improved resistance of, uh, to rolling contact fatigue and to be able to test these uh, materials at an early stage in the development process. And it hopefully aids in increasing the number of different test setups which are used for testing these materials. Um, using a full scale uh, test rig, um, which we have access to at, at First Alpine. So, how, we, uh, how are we doing that, or how are we planning to do that? Well, the first step is generation of, of um, contact loading data. Um, we do that by multi body dynamic simulations of railway vehicles um, for the railway operation scenario. And on the other side, we determine the loading conditions on um, the full scale test rig or for full scale test rig experiments, which are here termed uh, the full scale test rig scenario. And then for both sets of, of loading data, we can assess the um, propensity towards rolling contact fatigue uh, crack initiation. And as a last step, uh, we can identify for both uh, scenarios the, um, the relevant uh, loading conditions for crack initiation. A few words about the multi-body dynamic simulations. Well, the focus here is on one specific scenario of metro operation with a 300 meter curve radius. In the simulation, we look at three vehicle types um, there is one type with a conventional bogey design, and we have two vehicles with, uh, uh, with self-steering bogies. Um, for the simulations, we use uh, a number of um, different measured wheel profiles, altogether 10 sets, and one set consists of one uh, measured profile for each of the wheels of the, of the vehicle. So if you have a a vehicle or a car with um, four axles and eight wheels. This means that one set is eight profiles, which we use in the simulation. On the um, rail side, we use a standard profile and we apply uh, typically measured track irregularities in the MBS simulation. The rolling contact fatigue assessment is done um, by the uh, wedge model, which has been developed for the prediction of crack initiation with respect to head checks previously. Um, the main point of this um, criterion is it is based on, on, on stresses, but it takes into account the severe plastic shear deformation at the surface of the rail, which you can also observe in metallographic sections. 
the idea is that there is a um, um, higher propensity towards crack initiation or for crack initiation um, if the lamella or if this aligned macrostructure is, is um, oriented at an oblique angle to the surface um, so that microscopic cracks can grow away from the surface and are la less likely removed by um, yeah, growing back to the surface and generating um, a wear particle. Um, one important um, definition is shown here. It's the effective stress, which is shown in the subsequent um, figures. It is um, calculated as the maximum principal stress in the simulations. Um, multiplied by a factor that relates to the influence of the plastic shear deformation condition. And there's a second factor which relates to the influence of a tangential traction direction, if it's either um, traction or, or braking. Um, if you want to look at the details, I can refer you to the two papers who are given at the bottom of the slide. Let's have a look at results. Well, we have now a, a couple of, of multiple, simulations, multiple simulation results here for the metro operation of the 300 meter curve radius. On the left side, you see the individual contact patches or this well, effective stress resulting from these individual contact patches. So keep in mind, this is stress-based, but there is an influence of the plastic deformation um, condition of the surface in this uh, stress values. If you now sum up these uh, loadings to get a, a, a damage value, you get to the, uh, the image at the right side where you can see that we have two main areas um, where the main action takes place uh, next to the um, rail head and towards the rail uh, gauge corner. There are two ma minor regions uh, at the top of the rail and at the side of the rail, but the majority of the contacts in this case takes place in these two um, parts. To analyze um, or to identify the critical uh, loading conditions, uh, the diagram on the left side might not be um, the best way uh, to see the, which uh, loading conditions are typically and which are contribute most to the, uh, to the final uh, damage sum. Um, maybe it's uh, better to choose another um, figure to point it out. So what we did here is now we um, divided these contacts in lateral direction into stripes of, of one millimeter width and plotted them in a diagram where we plotted the maximum normal pressure uh, on the vertical axis over the um, uh, adhesion coefficient as the horizontal axis. And we introduced two classes of, of uh, with respect to the, this effective stress. So we distinguished between medium values running from 500 to 750 and everything above, uh, we said it's high values. And if you do that, um, you see that um, well, loading conditions that generate or that exhibit high values of this effective stress group in, in two clusters here. There is one cluster, cluster B, that's mainly coming from or caused by leading axles in the bogies, and there is a cluster A, um, which is mainly associated with, with trailing axles in bogies, and also there are some, some points from, from leading axles in the bogies. Yes, this is just a detailed. Let's uh, go to the full-scale test trick experiments. Um, so now we want to reproduce these loading conditions in, in cluster A, which we saw before. Um, if you talk um, about the 
full-scale test rig, we have to keep in mind that there is only one wheel at the test rig, which rolls repeatedly on one piece of, of, of rail. That's a little bit different than um, the um, contact conditions in operation, where you have a variety of, of different wheels running over um, a rail. But at a test rig, you can precisely control uh, boundary conditions such as the force, the forces, the wheel force, the lateral force, the angle of attack, or the torque applied to the uh, to the um, uh, wheel. Um, at the test rig, contact contact conditions mm, uh, usually change with the number of cyclists during the experiment. You may get conformal contact conditions, which are shown. An example is shown on the right side. Um, this, yeah, is um, allows us to realize uh, a range of local contact conditions within actually one, one contact. And these locally varying contact conditions arise due to varying rolling radius and um, surface inclination. Um, for um, We can now do the same assessment as shown before for these full-scale test rig experiments, which uh, is shown on the left side now. And for a given um, test setup, we um, yeah, can nicely reproduce, for example, the loading conditions of, of this cluster A here. The um, range of, of conditions here at the test rig is narrower, but um, we're here at, at the right um, set of, of, of conditions in the, in the experiment as uh, compared to the, to the um, operation. And of course, in the test uh, rig experiment, you can play around with um, um, some boundary conditions. Here is shown the variation of the, uh, of the wheel angle of attack, which is equivalent to changing the lateral creepage on the test rig. And this allows you to uh, move and redistribute uh, the points or the loading conditions in this diagram here. Um, in this range. Yeah, to sum up and conclude, well, loading conditions in railway operation for a given site vary significantly uh, due to track geometry, the wheel profiles that run over this uh, site and vehicle properties. We have investigated the influence of the wheel uh, profile geometry in this case, track irregularities and vehicle type. Um, as part of the, of the multi-party simulations for this operation scenario. And we can say that typically site-specific contact loading conditions uh, do exist. Um, by using the, the wedge model, as shown before, we can analyze uh, those contact conditions which contribute significantly um, to um, the total damage value and contribute in, uh, to crack initiation. And we can, on a test rig experiment, uh, focus on reproducing those loading conditions that are relevant for the, for the crack initiation. And this allows, in our uh, um, opinion, to transfer these relevant loading conditions which we see or which may, may occur in, in operation into experimental or targeted experimental um, test settings on the, on the test rig. This is the end of the presentation. I thank you for your attention, and I'm happy to answer questions.